Right. Tell us a little bit about your book. I, I, we're talking today to uh, Reverend Lee Thomas from uh, the state of Louisiana in this area, serving for uh, weeks now. He's going to be in the region. I'm going to have him share in the next few days the places he's going to be in. Talk to us, uh, Brother Thomas, a little bit about this book, Praying Effectively for the Lost. Well, we've had uh, over 400,000 of the books printed and distributed, and uh, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's just really compact with a lot of information. I got a letter from a lady yesterday, and uh, she said, uh, this book is more powerful than atomic bombs, uh -huh. and it really gripped her heart. God gripped her heart with it, and so we need to, uh, we need to get the books out, and so we want, we want folk to, to get the book and read it. There's information on the back, and I, I'm sure they'll show some on the television here that if you want the book, you can... Uh, Contact us and get it. As I say, we need to we need to give the information, uh, your address and your uh, if you've got an email address on right. there on the back side of that. Uh, that information is on the screen right now. And write that down. And then also, as you're itinerating, mostly in Southern Baptist, the circles in the state of Kentucky for the, this entire month. I guess you're going to be well. I'm, I'm going to be in Southern Baptist. But I'll be in Assembly of God. I'll be in Church of Christ. Uh, I've been in Pentecostal. I go to any, I go to any of them because we won't keep folk out of hell. Well, this and is a message that transitions absolutely uh, transitions beyond denominational absolutely. walls or barriers. Where are you going to be in the next two or three days? You was give me some of your schedule. Uh, tonight at six thirty, I'm going to be at First Baptist Church of Garrett uh, out from Hazard. That's Tuesday uh, night. So because we're on tomorrow morning, I want to make sure yeah. that we're identifying this is or Thursday night. Excuse yeah, me, Thursday, Thursday night. night. Tomorrow night I'll be at uh, Wrigley Baptist Mission, and Wrigley is, is just a little bit uh, sort of northeast of uh, West Liberty. Uh, Saturday I'll be in Louisville. Uh, I'm not sure what church I'll be in there, but I'll be in Louisville. Uh, Sunday I'll be in Frankfurt, uh, in a Baptist church in Frankfurt. And then Sunday night I'll be in uh, the First Assembly of God in Alexandria, Kentucky. And then after that, I'll, I'll be all over the state, but I, I couldn't tell you the, the whole itinerary right we now. We have information on how to get a hold of Brother Thomas. And if your church, uh, you're interested in in, in the ministry and the message. Give us a call here at the station, 606-329-2700, and we'll be able to contact his office and, and get information, and, and if he's still in the area, and, and maybe some booking. This is a powerful message, and people need to hear how to pray and how to pray effectively that we might see lost people saved and come to know the Lord as their personal Savior. We're battling. It's, it's more than just um, it's a spiritual warfare that we don't really see. We, we wrestle not against flesh and right. blood, the Bible says. You brought a little illustration for us. Talk to us a little bit about what you have uh, here, Brother Thomas. The, the thing we have to understand, Dr. Clifton, is whoever controls the mind controls the person. The Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. And so God has given us weapons. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 through 5, he says, we're at war, and the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're not of the flesh, they're not physical, but they're mighty through God, to the pulling down of strongholds. Now, stronghold is nothing more than a mindset that's against the word and will of God. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. He's given us weapons to pull down strongholds. Their mindsets, they're in the mind. Cast down imaginations. Imaginations are in the mind. And every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, knowledge is in the mind. And bringing every thought into captivity, the beings right. of Christ. Thoughts are in the mind. So whoever controls the mind controls the person. So what the devil tries to do is to control the mind. And the scripture they have on the front of the book is 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3 and 4. It says, if our gospel be hid, it's hid to them who are lost and whom the God of this world hath blinded their minds, lest the light of the gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine in them. So the devil blinds the minds of lost people to keep them from understanding the gospel. So you could take a blind man out and say, well, look how beautiful the sunset is today, but he can't see it. He's blind. Right. So we share the gospel with people and they can't see it because they're blind. And so here's, here's what we need to understand. The only mindset or stronghold or sin that sends anyone to hell is the sin of unbelief. No one goes right. to hell because they're adulterers, murderers, liars, thieves. Jesus said in John chapter 16, when the Holy Spirit's come, he will convict the world of sin, righteousness, and judgment to come. Of sin because they believe not on me. So the only sin that sends anyone to hell is the sin of unbelief. Since Satan wants everyone to go to hell, he, he guards this particular mindset with other mindsets. And here's the way he does it. Let's take greed, for example. The rich young ruler came to Jesus and wanted to know what he could do to inherit eternal life. And the Lord said, well, keep the commandments. He said, I've done that from my youth up. And then the Lord said, one thing you lack, not two, not three, not a dozen, just one thing. He said, go sell all that you have, give the money to the poor, and then you come back. Uh -huh. And Dr. Clifton, what the Lord did is told him not how to get saved, but the one thing that was keeping him from right. getting saved. Uh -huh. The Bible says he went away very sorrowful because he was very rich. 
And Jesus knew that greed controlled his mind. As a matter of fact, in chapter 19 of Matthew, the Lord says that it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle right. than it is for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. Not because God doesn't love rich folk, but because it's such a Greed. strong mindset yep. that it that controls people and keeps from coming to Christ. He went away lost. So if the Lord cannot even win someone who comes to him uh, because of a mindset, we're not going to either. Let's take the woman at the well. John chapter 4. The Bible says that Jesus must needs go through Samaria. And while he was there, the 12 preachers went downtown to buy some meat and bread. While they were gone, this lady shows up to draw water. He begins to talk to her. They talk about everything except her heart problem. And finally, the Lord said, go call your husband. She said, I don't have a husband. He said, that's right. You've been married five times, and now you're living in adultery. And just like that, he had her attention. He put his finger on the thing that, that, that controlled her heart and her mind, and it broke. And the difference between her and the rich young ruler, with him it didn't break. With her, it broke right. when she was confronted. Right. And she said, you must be the Messiah. Right. Let me tell you one more real quickly, and that is bitterness. Uh, bitterness is so strong. I tell the story in the book of a preacher friend of mine in Houston, Texas. And at one time, he did a lot of counseling. And one day, a lady from Dallas called him, wanted counseling. She'd been to other counselors, and nobody been able to help her. And while she was driving from Dallas to Houston, he was praying. He said, Lord, what do I need to know about this lady to help her? And uh, the Lord said, ask her about the country western dance. He said, Lord, what does that mean? And God didn't tell him anything uh -huh. else. He just tells us what we need to know. Uh -huh. Well, she got there, and the first thing she asked him was, what do you know, want to know about me? Because most counselors want to know about their client. He said, I just want to know one thing. What happened at the country western dance? He said, when I asked her that question, she began to scream at me. I said, who told you about that? And then she began to weep, and then she told him this story. She said, when I was 15 years old, my best friend invited me to a country western dance. She said, I didn't want to go, but I finally went. She kept on and kept on. When I got there, I saw my Sunday school teacher drunk with a mm -hmm. bottle of beer in her hand. And she said, that night I said to God, God, if this is Christianity, you can have it. And she turned her back upon God. And that's why she'd had so much trouble. She said, I've had multiple marriages. My life is uh, basically living hell. Well, the Bible says the way of the transgressor is hard. The road you go down when you turn that's your right. back on God is hard. That's right. But since Eddie knew what the problem was, she got bitter at God at age 15. He was able to pray with her, and God set her free. Isn't that marvelous? It's, it's wonderful what God can do in just a moment of time when that breaks. Absolutely. And, and there's power in the unity of prayer. So many of you that are watching today, you've got loved ones, and I want you to get, go to the phone right now and give our prayer partners a call, 606-329-2700. Here's what I want you to do. When they answer the phone, just say, uh, my son, my daughter, my husband, my wife, and, and give us their first name. If it's John, Bill, Sue, Mary, whatever it is, and just say they're lost, and I want you to pray. And before we go off the program today, I'm going to ask them to bring uh, that list in here. We've got about three or four minutes, and I want you just as quick as you can, go to the phone right now and start calling, and, and we want to bind together with you. There's power in prayer. When two or three agree yes. is binding anything on earth. And I believe God can answer our prayers right now well, and can, can touch the lives of individuals. And you say, well, you don't know them. That doesn't matter. It's like the story we told about, if you was on here a moment ago, about William Carey and, and his son. And when these people, 2,000 people began to pray, that very hour his son got saved was not even in the meeting. He was at another location. And I'm telling you, God can answer prayers as we go across these, these uh, airways right now and can touch people's lives. So we're going to have them call in right now. Right. Right. Let me share one other thing Please. that happens when we pray for lost people. Basically, three things happen when we pray for lost people. One is the demonic power that controls the mind is broken. The second thing is that God sanctifies that person, moves in and works on them. The third thing that happens is our love for them begins to get so great that we... Uh, that, that we do whatever it takes. But let me show how God sanctifies a person. First Peter chapter 1 and verse 2 says that we are the elect according to the foreknowledge of God through sanctification of the Spirit. And then he talks about the sprinkle of blood and the believing. Paul says the same thing in 2 Thessalonians. So what happens is, Dr. Clifton, when we get serious about praying for someone, let's just say you were praying for me. I was lost. You're praying for Lee. And the first thing God would do is he would set me apart. That's what the word sanctification means. It means to be set apart, to be made holy. Now, I'm not saved yet, but God says, okay, Lee's mine. He, it's like he draws an invisible circle around me. He begins to bring people and circumstances into my life uh, to work on me, to prepare my heart to, 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 uh, to get saved. But he doesn't do that until we pray. When we begin to pray, that's what God begins to do. I've got a